we're about to tie a tree drum. So I've already got these holes punched. Every four fingers, I have a set of two holes. Now we take the ring. We're going to cut our lacing so that it's got this nice pointed tip. And we're going to decide which side we want to be the top and which side we want to be the bottom. So here I've got a spine that runs right through here. If you look, see that nice, beautiful spine. So I want my tree to be even with the spine. Take some clips and clip each side. That way I have a marker of which one is my top and which is my bottom. And then I'm going to start all the way on the very first side and then through the other. Then we're going to tie a knot. So I have a short end and a long end. We're going to tie a knot in the middle. You will untie this knot, so don't go too tight with it. And then making sure I don't have any little knots in my lacing, I'm going to go to the complete opposite side. Going in one side, as you can see, and then through the other. Making it nice and strong. The reason we do two holes is because it helps it to not tear through as it dries and over years of use. And now we're going to crisscross. So we're going to go to this one and then to this one. And we're going to do this spinning wheel effect. And then we'll gather them in the middle and make our handle. Now in this one, I'm going to do every other set of holes. So I'm going to skip this one and I'm going to go straight to this one next. And the reason for that is because I want to have more space for the sound to radiate through the drums. So by offering more space, it allows more vibration of sound. So see, one, skip one, one, skip one. And then at the same time, I'm going to the opposite end and doing the same thing. So I'm going to go here to the opposite side and over. So here's the first one I did. Skip that one. I'm going to do this one next. And then we're going to go skip a hole and do the next one. Oh, and this one. So on here, we've run out of lacing. So I have a new piece of lacing. So you have a couple options. You can either tie them in a knot. And then keep that knot in the center and continue going with the other end of lacing. Or for a cleaner look, I'm going to take this end here and I'm going to punch a little hole in it and then feed this one through. So I'm using my little punch. This one is a 532. Pulling it tight and look at my knots still here in the center. Okay, so now I'm going to make my handle and then I'll go back and tighten it. So you're going to want to tighten any extra length. You want enough give that you can form a handle and have some pull, but not so much so that you can't. And so for mine, I want a lot more of the branches than the roots. So I'm going to let mine be just a little bit off center. And I untie my anchor knot. And 
and I'm going to do my first loop, rolling it over just like that, and then tucking it in underneath, holding really tight. And I'm going to do another loop. And for this one, I'm actually going to clamp it to hold it in place while I do the bottom. So now I'm going to take my long piece and I'm going to wrap it over and then I'm going to go under and I'm trying to pull the strings down. So I'm going to yank it down and then I'm going to go up to grab this piece and then down. And then you can start twisting and turning to get your branches to start forming. I'm twisting back up and I'm going to tie another knot with my short end and my long end. And then we're going to loop around, securing that short piece in place. Remember, anywhere you leave a short end, it's going to be sharp. And then I'm creating another little knot just to tighten. There we go. Okay. One more knot. The beautiful thing about the tree is they always look different because there's no exact process to see how it's going to pull. So now that I've got one side done, I'm going to go up and tighten this side by just looping back and forth, making this handle nice and thick as I go. And now it's time to make the lacings going in between. So for this part, I'm going to twist around this big whirly knot because that will help to not only reinforce it, but to kind of hide it. So now that I have a twist going up, I'm going to tie just a really loopy knot. So take a loop, pull it through the loop, and that just keeps it from unraveling. And on this one, I really like the twist look, so I'm going to make it super twisty. And I'm going to go through one hole. See how it just grabs that branch? Just like that. And then I'm going to go to the next one. Actually, for this one, I'm going to let this ring just a little bit. So 
So I'm only going to grab one of the lacings. And again, I'm going to do a knot. And for this, you want to pull all the excess. You want to pull it as tight as you can get it. And I am using a thicker quarter inch lacing. So I can pull it pretty tight, just like that. And then we're going to go down, twisting as I go. And then we're going to go under. And then we're going to twist up the opposite side so that we can have that nice symmetry. Creating a loopy knot. That is a technical term. <laughs> And then growing to the set of holes that's right in between. And then I'm going to go up to this one and I'm going to do the same thing I did on this side. So looping it through, pulling it tight, and creating a loop knot. So that it doesn't slide. Okay. There we go. And then we're going to pull it all the way down. We're going to go across. And twisting up. Tying a knot. And we're going to the next set of holes. Go to the next bar, tying the knot, pulling it tight. Pulling it up the opposite side. Creating a knot. And going through the next set of holes.
holding it tight. Grabbing our next one. And tying a knot. I'm just doing a loop around this base to pull in those extra strings because any strings that are loose will rattle. And by rattle, I mean it'll create a bzz, bzz sound that we don't want. <laughs> and I'm going up the next one, pulling tight as I go. Ready for our knot. And then through the holes at the top. Ooh, look at that spine. And then down we go. Tying our knot and then down we go. Okay, now for this one, I am going to draw on the base a little bit more, pulling those two in just making everything nice and super tight. So you can see I'm pulling in the base of all of these just to tighten them and align them so they stay separate and they don't twist on top of each other. Okay, and then now I'm almost out of string so I'm gonna tie this one off. This is where pliers come in handy because you're just going to tuck it underneath the other lacings. We'll wrap right in there. So I squeeze my pliers in first, open them slightly, grab the end, and then pull it through. It's looking very nice. For our roots, I've got a new piece of rawhide lacing. I've got my end cut. And I'm going to start over on this far edge of those empty holes. Now you can, if you're trying to signify a true tree of life, you can actually connect these two. Um, and then that way you have it connected here on the sides, but then you'll pull it so you still have your full handle. I want this to come down just a little bit more. I actually love the connection of the tree of life and the shadow, so I am going to connect back up here. So I looped it in one way, out the other, and then I have my short end that's coming up through here. I'm going to wiggle a little bit of space in between my twisted rawhide up here just to hold it extra secure. So now I've got it just wiggled right through there, and then I'm going to loop it around and I'm going to tie a knot. Grabbing my pliers to pull it super tight. And pulling that tight. 
Now this piece you're going to tuck in this twisted lacing because remember this piece that's dangling here will become very sharp. Now it's nice and tucked. And then on this side, we're gonna pull it again and we're gonna copy similar to what we did above. So we're gonna pull this piece all the way through. Tie a knot. loop it down. Then go under, around, and go over to this side. Pulling it tight. And then going through the next set of holes, Very tight. And then I'm just going to twist a little and then come do another knot and then come back down. For this one, I'm going to do another knot, and then I'm going to do a double knot, and then I'm actually going to snip it off. Tucking that piece away. Okay. And then we'll come back in here. Taking a new piece, finding the center, and tying a knot. And then we're going to twist back down again. Another loop, knot. Go to this next one. Pulling that tight, tying a knot. And then twisting back up. Now because it's the roots, I really like to make a lot of funky twists and turns, so I'm gonna do a few extra loops here because I love having them all connected. Really pull some of those down too. Looping over and then down again. a knot and the next set of holes
tuck this one behind and over again. Pulling tight, watching all of the twists. We're gonna go down again. Tying a knot. And in one set of holes. Through the other. Pulling super tight. And then up we go again. Doing a loop knot. I actually want this one to be a little bit higher just so they're a little bit more sporadic. Tying one final knot. And then we take this extra and we're just going to loop it. And now the rest of it's just design. So if you look through, we've got all of our knots covered, all of the holes covered. So now we get to play just a little bit. Now we've got it all tied exactly how we want it. We're gonna let it dry for 24 to 48 hours, 36 hours if you have a really thick hide. And you see how some of these pieces are coming up just a little bit? We can go ahead and clip those and that will keep them down while she dries. You could also wrap a cloth or a ribbon around just to hold the pressure. And now we wait.